sure on Rico's gift, and that's not my point. My point is, will these paintings sell uh, sell on 52nd Street? My best judgment has to be no. What does Barbara think? Honey, Jack wants to know what you think. I think they're god awful. You can quote me. God awful, and you can quote her. Well, sure, they're brilliant, technically. I know it's denying that Enrico's a gifted technician. Oh, but the subject matter, please. Enrico had a rough summer. His wife left him. Worse yet, she came back. <laughs> Still, canvas after canvas of dead chihuahuas. <laughs> lying on their little backs, their tongues black and protruding. What is the point? Jack, changing the titles isn't going to help. <laughs> Requiem for Chico 1 through 20 is a perfectly legitimate title. This is so ridiculous, David. Uh, look, Jack, I gotta run. You did your best, but no cigar. Right. And uh, give my best to Enrico. Love for me, you shouldn't take it personally. And uh, love from Barbara, you shouldn't take it personal. <laughs> right. God. He took it personally. Of course, he always does. Why are you running around like a dirty? Oh, you know exactly why. David, why do you think they're coming? I haven't the faintest idea. Now you spoke to Judy. What did she say? She said, Martin and I would like to come over around 7 o'clock and discuss something. Well, there you have it. You know, I'm sure it's nothing major. They're coming in from the island. You know how much they hate coming in from the island. Well, maybe they want to go to the theater. They never go to the theater. Unless Fiddler's playing somewhere. <laughs> what did they want to discuss with us? Is the gorgeous Sarah getting in trouble? Not that I know of. She's apparently quite happy in Buffalo. <laughs> well, she's in Buffalo already. It's November, David. She's there three months. Amazing. That kid in college. You know, I remember holding her in my lap. Me too. At Mother's party last April. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My guess, best guess is I came in the city and just decided to drop by. Discuss something is what she said. Uh, perhaps he just wants to kick in a little bit more for your mother. Oh, Trudy would have said something over the phone. She's never been shy about money. Do you want something to drink? No, thanks. Me neither. You know, we really don't deserve this bar. Look at this <laughs> Eden water, Pellegrino water. Andy Warhol must be turning over in his grave. Oh, I don't think Andy Warhol ever owned this bar. <laughs> the architect swore. He swore a lot of things. We should have framed that estimate. We could have sold it as an abstract expression. <laughs> <laughs> you still hear from him? Do I still hear from whom? From whom? Oh, you know who. That, that draftsman you brought up here. Richard? Richard. No, why should I hear from him? Mm hmm Oh, please. Hey, I didn't say. <laughs> Dinners tonight? 
Barbara, this is nothing new. She has this view of us that's so depressing to me. But then she finishes it all off by saying, because Martin and I have something we want to discuss with you and David alone. Alone, David? Think about this. I'm not seeing it clearly. I know it. Sarah's knocked up. They want to trade you to an east side abortionist. Well, <laughs> I keep thinking maybe mother is well. Barbara, if anything was wrong with your mother, Trudy would have told you over the phone. Of course, David, that's what it is. Mother's died. Oh, Barbara, for Christ's sake. Come people don't come over to your house to discuss the fact that your mother died. <laughs> yes, I think we'd like to talk over with you, Barbara and David. We'd like your opinion, too. Mother is dead. <laughs> I have a bad feeling. Barbara, your mother's barely aged. She's got another 30 years left. Come on, David, she did break her hip. Evan makes his white sail. <laughs> Does that make her side? It's a sign she's not feeble. Now, it's one thing to break your hip while rolling off a jaw. It's, it's a, she's a pregnant woman down the aisle and they got some bath towels. She's definitely deteriorating. Her hearing is... She a... never listened anyhow. I'm telling you, they, they have a problem with Sarah. Some, some sex and or drug scandal. You know, I think you're rooting for that. Well, certainly not. Oh, it is a possibility. I mean, Sarah's a spectacular, miraculous girl, raised by a pair of yaks. Now that she's left the nest, she wants to get in touch with life, create herself, make herself over. Screw lots and lots of people. Oh, I hope not. They go crazy. Oh, why are you sighing? You're worrying yourself into the state. No, I haven't spoken to her in over a week. Who? Mother. It's no sin. We've been so busy. Oh, we're always so busy. Barbara, you do as well for your mother as can possibly be expected. It isn't enough. It's never enough. Come on. <laughs> right on time. When are you going to fix that buzzer? <laughs> Sounds yes. like a damn airy warning. What? Them? Okay. Them. I hate this, the interval after the buzzer sounds. It's in Dante, the ninth circle of hell. We spend eternity standing by the door waiting for someone to get off the elevator. Palms always start to sweat. God, I hope it's nothing serious. Oh, your palms? Well, I'm sure they'll dry right up this evening. I'm enjoying your humor this evening, really. Hi! Here. <coughs> gonna make them ring the bell. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Right on time, too. Martin and Trudy are the perfect guests. Hello, dear. How are you? You look marvelous. Oh, thank you. I'm all right. Uh, Martin? David? <laughs> That's a, a new suit, I see. This? Oh, uh, I've had this suit, what, three years, Trudy? Four years, at least. I think you're wrong. I think it's three. Four, when you're still driving the Valiant. Well, three, four, it's a great suit. Look at Greg, Mark. That outfit is something, David. Well, thank you. It's not new either, actually. <laughs> well, let's not all stand around like we're at a cocktail party. Sit, sit. What do you want to care for something to drink? If you have any ginger ale. Uh, one ginger ale. Martin, you're a seven to seven man. I uh, never drink before it. Oh, you can pretend. Never pretend. Ginger ale is fine. Ginger ale? Please, everybody sit. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> uh, you see, you have a soul to shut up. Uh, no, Martin, I'm, I'm rather fond of this one. I always forget those crazy names. Uh, what are those two called? Well, it, it's one painting, Martin. This is the Waldman. It's called uh, Chesapeake Bay Variations. I see. One painting, but there's two things hanging on the wall there. It's uh, one composition, Martin. What's that mess over there called? <laughs> Good old Martin. Uh, that's the uh, Ferrandini. It's called uh, with Lilacs Bloom. And you paid a thousand each for them? Correct. And what are they worth today? Martin, every time you come over here, you want to know how much they're worth. You know, it doesn't change that much from year to year. Now, over a span what of years... Change? I'm just curious. Is it a Calvin? Someone interested in value, in appreciation, and... I would say the Walt is worth about 18000 now, uh, Ferrandini's a little out of vogue, so when Lilac's going to bring the whole about seven or eight thousand. Well, how can one be in vogue and the other not? Those two are blank. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not blank. There's paint on them. They're, they're paintings. There's no picture. I guess we don't understand art, Martin. David is the expert. He There's knows. There's something on there. Martin, I don't insist that you like this painting. And Martin, it is a painter. <laughs> 
You know, art is, after all, a, a subjective matter, but please realize that there's something on it. I mean, it, it has modalities of blue. The paint is thicker in some places and thinner in others. It has texture. True, it doesn't depict bowls of fruit or little boys on ponies or loads of choo-choos in the night, but it is a painting. <laughs> Blank. <laughs> arguing about those paintings again. Martin continues to withhold his approval. No, no, no. I approve. You paid two grand for them. Now they're worth 25. That's good business. I think it's art. They stink, and I'm not afraid to say it. You've never been afraid to say it. <laughs> Martin, please sit here. Ginger isn't cold enough. I got plenty of ice. Hot and cold are all the same to me. <laughs> cheese and crackers. Do you eat cheese before eight? David, don't be a tease. It looks very nice. What's this white cheese called? Brie. Oh, we've had that before, Martin, at the Bowermans. It's unbelievably expensive. Really? <laughs> you ever see two sisters so different? One says expensive, the other says cheap. You know, Martin, it's kind of like these paintings. I mean, they're both similar in origin, but how come one increases in value while well, the other one levels off? That didn't come out right. <laughs> Trudy's leveled off? Oh, not at all. You look fantastic, Trudy. I'm not just saying that. Your hair? Uh, your absolutely. Skin. It was just a figure of speech, <laughs> a, a metaphor, a simile. Whatever. Excellent cheese. We should get this, Trudy. Oh, it costs a fortune. Trudy, I don't know where you get that idea. Oh, French cheese. We buy it our time, actually. <laughs> this is a small down payment, pennies a month. By the end of the year, the cheese is ours. You can't keep it a year. So, Mark, how's business going with you? Oh, he's so busy, he can hardly talk when I call. Really? I, I imagine uh, November would be rather slow for accountants. I mean, before the tax season. I'm doing a lot of tax planning for my clients right now. Retirement plans, IRAs, like disabilities, pensions. Like a dog, while I'm home with Mom. Oh, Trudy, you know, I meant to call Mom on Wednesday, but we have had such a week at the gallery. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> so, uh, how's this with you, Dave? Uh, quite good, actually, considering the weather's been so lousy. That makes a difference? Not for some galleries, but we have a strong walk-in trade. <laughs> Tourists, people just out for a stroll. You know, you'd be surprised how many people just wander in and whip out a checkbook when they see something they like. Can you imagine? <laughs> people are such... Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a superb investment, Trudy, if you know what you're doing. For instance, we have a new show by a, a young Brazilian, Oliveras. Oh, he's wonderful. Even you. The very Rizzo West. Enormous moons, looming breasts, everything larger than life. Fantastic <laughs> colors. Expensive? Not really. Oh, to Barbara, nothing is expensive. Trudy, that's not fair. How can you say that? How can I say that? In school, who had to have a new loose leaf binder every year? Me? No, I had the same one for four years. You a new one every term. That's just because I was writing my boyfriend's names all over them and I had a different boyfriend every term. <laughs> and I didn't have any boyfriends. Oh, I never said you didn't have a boyfriend. Jerry Lazar. Of course, I remember Jerry Lazar. Who uh, is Jerry Lazar? <laughs> I told you about Jerry Lazar. No, you didn't. Of course I did. I'll be if anybody needs me. <laughs> so Trudy, how's volunteer work going? I didn't know Trudy did volunteer work. <coughs> uh, four years now with the Brownies. Oh, it's that marvelous. Still Mondays and Thursdays, Trude? I remember those pictures you showed me once. David, she had the most adorable room of little girls. I quit. You quit? Oh, no, that's a shocker. I had no choice. The Brownies forced you out? It was Mom. Mom? How is your mother? I haven't she seen her. She's impossible. She forced me out of the Brownies? That's unconscionable. Really? She didn't want me out of the house on Mondays and Thursdays. Oh, you're home every other day? Every rotten day. It's gotten very bad. We have a situation. Yeah, I see. She won't be left alone anymore. She refuses. I have to be there around the clock. <clears throat> yes, some help. We will gladly pay for half. Whatever. Hours. Absolutely. Is what you wanted to discuss? Is it mom? Because if it is, I have told you a hundred times, whatever you want to do, give me a call, I will sit down and write you a check. The sky's the limit in that department. I mean, is it this thing with the brownies, Trudy, that you wanted to discuss? Because my opinion is for what it's worth, and you got mom, so I defer to you because you have been an absolute saint with her, and she's been so happy with you and Minnie My opinion is you get a girl to be with mom 
twice a week, three times, then you go back to those brownies, because I know what that means to you. You know, I could not agree more. It's not that simple. This is a complicated issue. It affects mom, it affects us, and it affects you. Maybe this hollow street wouldn't hurt. Anyone else? Oh, gosh, it's oh, she won't take any help. She has to be with her children. Trudy, that's totally unreasonable. You I can't hear. argue with her. She plays deaf. Well, write her notes. I've never met a person who wouldn't finish a sour ball. <laughs> Goes through a can a day now. A can of half-eaten sour balls. <laughs> and then she methodically leaves them around the house, planting them. I found a green on my wallet this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I find them in the carpeting, in the stairways, in the toaster, burning, smoldering. It's a nightmare. Well, I would just insist, insist on getting some help. <laughs> you would insist. Barbara, you have no idea what's going on with her. Martin, Trudy, you, you, you sure? Oh, we're fine. Can I tell you about our long-distance phone calls? No, who does she know out of town? Nobody. She makes mistakes. She calls her friends in Manhattan. Mrs. Landers and Mrs. <coughs> dials 213 instead of 212. Well, 213 is Los Angeles. <laughs> Our phone bill last month was over $500. <laughs> uh, when they pick up, she starts talking. Sometimes we're lucky, and they hang up. Other times, they put her on hold. <laughs> <laughs> For a half an hour, a day race, She's conversing with some static in Beverly Hills. <laughs> I feel so badly for you. It's a complete disaster. Perhaps if you know where the phone calls are going to. Of course. We have the phone statement first thing. We track down the number. Who's well, she been calling? 20th Century Fox. Well, that's absurd. <laughs> she should have her agent do that. <laughs> what do you dial for, Drew? Why don't I dial for her? Because she doesn't want me dialing for her. She wants me chained to that kitchen, boiling her tea and making her those little whole wheat sandwiches. Just put your foot down. I've had it, Barbara. I've absolutely had it. The last thing I need is your damned advice. Oh, Trudy, you want to... This is building up. Depression, our married life. I understand. Three years of it now, and her mother's getting more difficult. There's a mean streak now. Our life is over. How pretty you. We have nothing. Absolutely nothing. She's up at all. Well, you still have Sarah. Now, I I'm sure that's a great comfort. Of course, you have Sarah. We don't have Sarah anymore. <laughs> she went away to school. Now, you might not have her in the everyday physical sense. We lost her. What do you like to say so? You're being ridiculous. She's still your daughter. She'll be home for vacation. She's gone. She's vanished. You mean she's literally a missing person? In a sense. <laughs> well, even if she's missing or she's not missing, we're not having a, a metaphysical dialogue. We have a problem with her. That's really what we've come to discuss, Barbara and Data. That's really why we're here tonight. We'll level with it. We have a problem with her. That's really what we've come to discuss, Barbara and Data. That's really why we're here tonight. We'll level with us. You know how we feel about Sarah. We have a problem with her. Academic problems? Uh, a problem with drugs. Or sex. <laughs> we hadn't been stuck with Milan, we could have seen this coming and we could have done something. I don't think so. Oh, of course we could have. Absolutely, Trudy. What exactly? Martin, tell them. Tell my sophisticated sister and brother-in-law. She's been quite upset. It's been a difficult week. Martin, what precisely is the matter? Okay. The last couple of weeks, whenever we call Sarah at the dormitory, which is how often? Twice a day. Oh, holy baloney! Twice a day! Well, we can make some air! She's our only child! Well, that's not the point! You, you, excuse me, but you don't understand the strain, the worry. I can understand what this is leading up to. No, you can't. Let Martha finish. Whenever we call Sarah at the dormitory, one of the other girls always answers the phone and tells us Sarah's in the library or taking a shower or in class or eating. She's never there. After an interval, she calls us back. The last time we spoke with her, she said we were hounding her. We should leave her alone. Can you imagine? She said we were treating her like a child. It was embarrassing her in front of her friends to have her parents calling her twice a day. Oh, I'm sure it is embarrassing to her. Oh, sure. Let Sarah run the mock. She's 18 years old, right? Go ahead. Tell me that. It's true. She also said we were keeping tabs on her, and she resented it. 
Well, what time do you usually call? In the morning around 7.30, at night around 11. Oh, and she got the impression you were keeping tabs on her. Last Wednesday, we called her 2.30 in the morning. She got quite upset. I'm <laughs> not surprised. Was she in at 2.30? She was taking another one of her showers. <laughs> that girl must be clean as a whistle. <laughs> she might have been out late. Oh, she worked. A shower at 2.30. She wants us to believe that. She thinks we're idiots. Pardon me, Judy. Can I say something? I mean, really say something. Oh, you're never been shy, David. No, but I'm flip, which is another way of being shy. You know, in spite of my nasty tongue, I both like you enormously. We appreciate that, David. On well, the situation of your daughter, however, I, I think you're both completely deranged. I have to. David! Well, let me finish. Now, it served me very well in taking a shower at 2.30 after studying for a test which was due in the morning, or, or being out with some friends, having a beer, or, or smoking dope, or whatever you do in Buffalo when you're 18. <laughs> and maybe, God forbid, your, your worst suspicions are true, and she was not in her drawer, but rather in some boy's house. Tip off to the fact that you had uh, called by some comrade on her floor. I submit, so what? Now, I realize this is hard for you to accept, but Sarah's not going to be a virgin for much longer. <laughs> she may not be, even as we speak. <laughs> she's an enormously attractive girl with the most amazing body. I'm sure she's very popular with the boys. You know, you're just going to have to learn to live with her. <laughs> Are you finished? I uh, hope I wasn't out of line. I wish it was just as you said, David. I wish it was just that simple. It is. Sarah is living with two men on Vogel Avenue in downtown Buffalo. She hasn't set foot in her door in a month. She hasn't been to class either. She's living with two guys? We haven't slept in a week. Living with? You mean having a... It's not that she has a boyfriend. She's living with a boy and he has a roommate. She's living with both. <coughs> they call it a menagerie. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you would know that better than me. <laughs> well, it usually refers to uh, two women and a man. Now, one of the more traditional male fantasies, I might add. I see. Well, apparently Sarah's taking on both these characters. A boy named Billy from Syracuse and a Peruvian named Gonzalo. I can still remember the Paddington bear we gave her. Sarah's last words to me on the phone were, I live for sex. <laughs> Everything is sex. I should make her life looking for a girl like that. <laughs> told me that, as you can imagine. Oh, he was white when he came back to bed. Martin is always white, but this was pure white. <laughs> Does Sarah at least like these boys, or is this just She a... says they're very close. She told me what they do all day. Quite a story. Martin, spare her. Spare yourself. First, she and the Irish kid, they go at it. Oh, Martin, I really don't want to hear this. Then, after the Irishman, she turns around and goes at it with the Peruvian. <laughs> then, after that, they go out for lunch. <laughs> that was just the morning. I live for sex now, Dad. I live for sex. This is staggering. You know, I always knew that Sarah was precocious, but I must this say This is your fault, both of you. Judy, you told her to go away to college. I thought it was a good idea. I still do. Martin, tell them what else she said. Judy, we get <coughs> No, you should know it all. You always thought of Sarah as your daughter. You were her liberated parents with none of the responsibilities. Oh, you took her to see that filthy Picasso show. Oh, please. <laughs> that hardly led up to this. I mean, thousands of people went to see those paintings and then went home to their wives, husbands, and children. Trudy, I resent the implication that we might have had anything to do with this. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, maybe I will have a little scotch, David. Please, just any kind. Of course. A little fine. Uh, Martin, it's score to be. One little head start. I've always been a very disciplined person. This is a uniquely stressful situation, Martin. We'd certainly understand. All the more reason for me to keep my self-control. <laughs> she told me things. You know what she said she liked the best? Oh, this you won't believe. <laughs> I find this more than a little 
masochistic on your parts, going over and over this debasing conversation. No, I agree. She's your niece. You should know. So you'll understand our decision. What decision? So at the end of our conversation, my little daughter, who once loved oatmeal cookies and milk the best, <laughs> now tells me her favorite thing is when these guys spritz all over her breasts. Oh, <laughs> Where exactly is Vogel Avenue? <laughs> <laughs> what would you do with a daughter like that? I'd wash off her chest for old <laughs> It must be a blessing to have a sense of humor like that, to be able to laugh at other people's tragedy. Oh, it's not a tragedy, not yet. She's not your daughter, that's why it's not a tragedy. Trudy, I understand your concern. Now, believe me, I feel very close to Sarah, and I'm sorry that she's doing this, but I'm I'm sure it will pass. When? Well, she'll get bored with it. She'll get bored with this? <laughs> <laughs> Two guys? What then? Horses? Cows? <laughs> Mark, I'm sure that any livestock is a real long shot here. <laughs> now, she'll just shake this out of her system and get on with her life. You know, and I think it would certainly help matters if you two would just leave her alone. I agree. She's just flaunting her sexuality. Do you think we should wait it out? Well, I certainly don't think you should call her twice a day. I do think you should talk to her. Tell her that what she's doing is giving her a distorted view of sex, but don't be a scold about it. <laughs> I'd be more concerned if she was involved with drugs. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate your advice, really. Judy and I felt it was important that you know the background of the situation so you'd understand. Understand what? Our decision. What decision? <laughs> Well, I feel, and I know Mark agrees with me, that none of this would have happened if we had paid more attention to Sarah. More attention to Sarah? You paid too much attention to Sarah! Please forgive me, Barbara, but if you were a mother, you'd understand there's no such thing as too much. Of course there is. How can you say it? Let me oh, continue. I just disagree. I remember Sarah sleeping in your bedroom until she was, what, nine? She had ear infections. Oh, we had to keep an eye on her. Mark, you were far too cautious with her. Please let me continue. We did not pay enough attention to Sarah, and that's because of Mom. We were preoccupied. We were preoccupied with Mom. Her demands, her hip. As a result, we neglected Sarah. You didn't neglect Sarah. Of course we did. Anyhow, we're going up there tonight. We have our tickets. You're going to Buffalo? Of course. Do you think we're going to wait until she's pregnant or she gets her throat cut by those two maniacs? You're leaving tonight. Did I get that right? We'll be at the Travel Lodge in Buffalo for as long as it takes. Oh, what are you going to do, a doctor? Whatever you want to call it, being responsible is what I call it. It won't be easy. We both know that. We may be up there a month or so. I've already told my firm. What about Mom? <laughs> <laughs> She won't go to a home. And I don't want her in one. She's not feeble or senile. Trudy, what exactly are you saying? You know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying, but I think I'd like to hear you say it. There's no choice, Barb. She has to stay here. That yeah. is impossible. I am at the gallery every day. I work. Well, hire somebody to be with her. You just said she wouldn't have anybody. Well, maybe it will be different with you. <laughs> that chance, huh, Trudy? Well, she tries. <laughs> Look, aside from the fact that Barbara has to get the gallery every day, we simply don't have enough space here. You have an extra bedroom. It's a gastro. room. Well, now you have a guest. Artists <laughs> <laughs> stay in that room when they are in New York. It was designed for that. Salvador Dali once slept in that room. You got a couch right here. Martin, you would seriously expect me to put Salvador Dali and Dali up on the living room couch? Well, artists are supposed to suffer a little. Not when they're 88, for Christ's sake. Look, Martin, Trudy, go on. Go ahead to Buffalo State as long as you have to. David and I will hire someone to be with Mom 24 hours a day. On weekends, we'll drive out and visit her. I'll call her twice a day. <laughs> no. Why not? Don't yell, Barb. Well, why it's an excellent idea. Your mother be happier. She'll have a, a companion all day. She won't have to drive into the city, which won't be heavy too good for her hip. No. She did fine. 
She did what fine? Made the trip in, didn't she, Trudy? No problem. Her name was like new. Well, when did she make the trip in? Well, this evening. What? Mom? With you tonight? Of course. We're going right from here in the airport. This is a mountain. You just brought Mom in without asking us? What's to ask? She's your mother as much as mine. Wait a minute. Where is she? Now, you've been up here for 40 minutes already. Well, she's in the car. We gave the doorman three dollars to watch her. <laughs> with you tonight? Well, she's had her dinner. You don't have to worry about that. Oh, is she in her jammies, ready for bed? Hey, but that's out of line. That's out of line. That's out of line. Hey, then. You simply show up out of the blue, uh, accuse us of contributing to the delinquency of your daughter. You, you, you drink our ginger ale, and then, yeah. without a consultation, without a word, you, you simply cause us obvious downstairs ready to move in with us. You know, I have never in my life heard of anything so outrageous. David, this is an emergency situation. We don't have time to argue. Our daughter is drowning, and Mother has to stay here, and that's all. I'll go get it. Wait a minute. We don't have time to wait. We have a 10 o'clock flight. You're just dumping your hair over all of our belongings? Oh, she doesn't have that much. It's mostly medication. Some clothes, nightgowns, a case of sour balls. Martin, hurry. You ought to help me, Trudy, be faster. I'll be back soon, Barb. And I'll put up some tea. I know she'll want some. And uh, she likes it with milk. A single teaspoon of milk. More than that, she pours it down the sink. And not too hot, she burns her toe. Uh, do you have any pound cake? Well, she likes some before she goes to bed. Toast it. <laughs> Does she know about this? Of course. Now I'm living with my fancy daughter. Oh, she's very excited. <laughs> God! He's separate. We'll hide from one. They just said you wouldn't have anyone. They said, they said, those two assholes. You know how they leave their miserable life is their own business. If your mother gets on your nerves, she starts to cause a ruckus here. We'll put them to do it. Oh, oh come on! That's five thousand a month. I'll sell some forgeries. It'll be worth it. The thing is, eventually they're going to want her back. Absolutely. Without Sophie, they have nothing to talk about. God. Scenario: They go up to Buffalo. Sarah tells them to screw off of the return of Jen. No, they're going to bring her back. I can't see how. I know them. Once they're pushed past a certain point, Martin is a schlemiel, but he can be a determined schlemiel. He gets set on something. Exactly. Okay. So they bring uh, Sarah back, and uh, she stays with them a month or so until she promises to rededicate herself to the great books program. <coughs> okay. Sarah returns to Buffalo, and Martin and Trudy return to long silences over dinner. Go back for Sophie's return. That's your scenario. That's it! Sophie will be here a month. Pops! God, I gotta get her tea! Just because Trudy says so, you just hop to it? You know, your mother can wait a minute for her damn tea. Oh, come on, David. She's always like it the minute she came in. Well, she's just gonna have to learn, isn't she? David, don't start now. Don't make this any harder. I'm not making it any harder. I just don't want you to become a galley slave to Sophie. I won't. I assure you, it's just that she gets very testy in this right there. I will not permit you to go away, huh? Oh, my God. How did they make it back so fast? Oh, my God, no, I can't handle it. Oh, my God, you, please! She's your mother! No, but I can't handle it. Stop right at the door, please. Okay. <laughs> Just remember, I got the door first. <laughs> Opportunity. How is she today? Impossible. Just <laughs> impossible. Well, I forgot to pick up People magazine. <laughs> that set off a wave of hostility. <laughs> and then we had a major send to on the topic of house brands versus name brands, following her keen eyed discovery of a can of Lasseur peas in the kitchen. A dollar nine, she exclaimed. I didn't know I was living with Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> well, you asked, David. What? What slight change? You're leaving now? You told me eight, David, eight! Oh, well, of course, if Maurice prefers. But God, I gotta get Mother up immediately. David, don't start. She has to be with us this evening. I will not keep her in her room under any circumstances. <laughs> Explain it to Maurice. My God, the man is 98 years old. I should hope he'd understand. 
David, take him out to dinner alone if you prefer. No, I will not join you. This is my mother we're talking about here. She has to be with us this evening, period. She's up. <laughs> Ask not. <laughs> Ask not for whom the waffle comes. <laughs> it comes for thee. She draws ever closer. <laughs> yes, I'll wear your favorite dress. Yes, I'll look sexy. Feel sexy? No, I'm sorry. It is impossible for me to feel sexy as long as she's in this house. What can I tell you? <laughs> oh, well, look who's up after the most enormous nap. Mom with David, mother. Yes, she's had quite the little snooze, and I think she's in a somewhat better mood. Not so jumpy, we all hope. Ready for a great evening? I didn't sleep a wink. Of course you did. I went in there, you were out like a light. Who could sleep with that picture over the bed? <laughs> Rauschenberg? Pieces of string and old newspaper. You call that a picture? It's called a collage. <sighs> not picking a paper for David. To me, it's no picture. David says hello, mother. Mm. He says <laughs> hi, Doc. Okay, darling, we'll see you and Mr. Maurice Fine in just a few minutes. Bye-bye. Oh, I was wrong, Mother. They're leaving now. What? I said they're leaving now. Who? Oh, David and Maurice Koenig, Mother. I thought they were coming at 8. Maurice got in on Monday, but I guess perhaps he's still a little jet lag. In any case, our number one priority is to get you all dressed and spiffed up. Come on. Where did you get these? Those? George Jensen. What? George Jensen. Ooh, just like the ones we had. Did we have butter knives? Isn't that odd? I have no recollection. Call Trudy. She'll tell you about the beautiful butter knives we had. Next time I speak to her. Because the pattern was a little bit different. It was called the Lock Shell Dregogs after the hotel we went to. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, actually. You don't remember the Lock Shell Dregogs? How old was I? Two and a half. How am I going to remember that? We stayed in the New Wing, even. You have any idea of the cost, even in those days? Just so you'd have a breath of fresh air. Mother, I'm not disputing that we stayed there or that it was a sacrifice. I simply told recall the event. They had the new wing and the old wing. Your father and I stood at the front desk and guess what he said, even if it costs more? That we should stay in the new wing. What? That we should stay in the new wing. That we should stay in the new wing. Oh, Mother, I think that was so nice of you and Dad. And those balls you were so crazy about. What? You don't remember those either? Mother, I was two and a half years old. I expect you to remember melon balls from 1956. What? Why are you shaking your head? No reason. Must be a reason. Just amazing to me what happens. Meaning what? How people change. People? Anyone specific? What? Well, I said, are you referring to anyone specific? Because if you're referring to people in general, you're probably right. Yes, they change. But if, on the other hand, you're talking about, say, me, your daughter, then I'd like to know what you're talking about. How have I changed? There's no reason to analyze everything. I'm not analyzing everything. I just want to know. Nobody's changed. Everything's nice. <laughs> oh, Posse, does this? Look gorgeous. Yes, Mother, we really have to get you going. This is a fish, Foxy. No, it's a cold mousse of pike, and I fixed a pair of sauce to serve with it. So, it's gefilte fish. So, so it's gefilte fish, no. Mother, I just told you it's a cold mousse of pike, and if the guests wish, I can add pernos sauce. To me, it looks like a filter fish. Well, probably right. It's a family resemblance or something, but no, this <laughs> dish is called mousse, mousse of pike. You mean you wouldn't serve the filter fish, is that it? Yeah, Priscilla, I wouldn't serve the filter fish. I simply don't find it a particularly festive dish. I'm not ashamed of it. Stop shaking your head! Why are you getting so upset? I am getting so upset because in five minutes, Maurice Cooney, the creator of Young Gula Matchmaker, the windows of the sauna and the Jerusalem tapestries is going to walk into our apartment for dinner. Instead of excitedly getting ready to meet this legendary, marvelous human being, you choose to sit there sniping at me! Sniping? Please! Sniping? What else is it? For two weeks, I feel like I'm up before some sort of a review board. And every day, these debates. Want me in a home? Just say oh. so. <laughs> I don't want you in a home. I wouldn't allow you in a home. What I would like is a situation where we could talk to me. 
Trudy adored grandmother of Sarah. Stop it. Trudy had them all written out. What <laughs> <laughs> all written out? My death notices. I found them in her recipe box and the casserole. <laughs> 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 When I die, she'd be too upset to think straight, so she wrote them all out beforehand. <laughs> no, but Trudy, I figured maybe there was a discount doing it in advance. <laughs> it was just her wish, right, Bobsy? Isn't that the right psychological thing? She wanted it to be. Mother, it was a dreadful thing for her to do, inexcusable. First I find death notices, the next thing I know, I'm dropped off here like a package from Bloomingdale. <laughs> Right to be angry. Now they get be a lot healthier if you just went ahead and got angry. If we could talk things out more. What? I said if we could talk things out more. Oh, you'll always be my little bossy. In the yeah. dolly slippers in the tutu. Remember when we went to get them? Yes, 56th Street, 54th. That's right. Mother, we really have to get you dressed. Comfortable like this. What's the big deal? Dinner is dinner. <laughs> Even when you were a little girl, you used to bite the sofa. <laughs> done. 
life. Okay. Rock bottom. Hi, <laughs> How are you? I'm wonderful. Why was she running around naked? Just No, later she'll be dead. We place reporters all over the place. Enough. You look terrific. Huh. Are a hundred year old Jew? I look terrific. Anyone you look terrific here. Can I have a scar? David? I'm nauseous. Can you please forge ahead? At least I can do it. I'm putting you in the closet. <laughs> She's security locked in. No chance of a breakout. She's getting dressed. I will not discuss it any further. I'll discuss it. Maybe I'll call up a radio station and discuss it over the air. Oh, it's been so long. Too long. Three years. Three years already? Mm -hmm. Christmas 85. We all had dinner together at the Mouham de Mouchere. How can I forget that dinner? Here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, how was your day in New York? Good? Very. The Museum of Modern Art has an idea for my 100th birthday. Oh, God forbid. But it's a retrospective. The entire museum? No! It's staggering. First Picasso and now Maurice. They're calling it Conan, from Yonko to Masada. We had lunch with Bill Rubin. He gave us a full spiel. It's incredible! I told him if I'm not here, proceed without me. Oh, you don't want to be here. No, I think Maurice, even with all of his honors, was overwhelmed. Absolutely to imagine such a thing. It's so wonderful. Oh, David, how about a drink? Let's do. I'm fine, darling. You can sell me a chair. Then I went to see the show at your gallery. Yes, the Olivera. And Maurice absolutely flipped. How lovely. <laughs> Now I have to write to Julio in the morning. When he hears that you like the show. Excuse? When he hears that you like the show. Maurice, would you like some wine? Wine would be wonderful. <laughs> now come A big glass. <laughs> Here's a little appetizer I fixed up for us, Maurice, although I'm sure next to what your cook puts together. My goodness, it's Cavelta fish. <laughs> Cavalta fish? Is it not served anymore? Oh, no, of course it is. Of course what is? Of course gefilte fish is still served. Oh, sure. Lots of gefilte joints opening out. Let's see it. How's gefilte king? How's uh, gefilte? David, David, I know you're joking. No, David. <laughs> You'll try some? I know, of course. There's no sauce. Thank you, no. Oh. David told me that your mother would be joining us this evening. Yes, she's uh, just getting dressed now. I think that's marvelous. Well... Uh, Maurice and I were discussing the benefits of the extended family over on the way over. <laughs> and actually, America, I was singing its praises. In America, it is quite rare, I think. Very sad. I suppose. She has lived here long? That depends on how you define law. <laughs> actually, just a few weeks. She was living with my sister Trudy and her husband, Bart. And their Lebrecious, full-breasted Sarah. Out on Long Island. Oh, uh, yes? They had to leave rather abruptly. <laughs> they assigned us the care and nutrition of Sophie. Mm. Maurice, there's something I really need to tell you. Mm. This is marvelous? Oh, you're sweet. But Maurice, oh, my mother is kind of broken. Yes? Well, how can I say it? She's got a rather strong will. Oh, of course. And with mother, one never really knows. One never is really sure in what precise direction she might head. I think what Barbara means is that Sophie's not used to dinner parties. That's not what I mean. Excuse me? <laughs> Just mean that uh, mother is I know. That she's your mother. Thank you. You got it. Bobby? Bobby? Mother? This door is locked. No, it might be locked. David, that is her. That's Sophie. Oh, Opening it now, Mother!
mother, I'd like you to meet Maurice Koenig. Maurice, my mother, Sophie Greengrass. It is indeed a great, great, great pleasure. Sophie, you look ravishing. I heard all about you from my daughter. She was so nervous about tonight. I said, for what? Dinner is dinner. Exactly. But the point is, here you are. Yes, here I am, so let's all sit. Thank you, darling. <laughs> so, who locked that door? Not me. I might have locked it without thinking. You know, we're a little too frightened. Locked conscious. in my room like a mashugana. Oh, no. Not at all. Maybe if I was locked in, it was for my own good, right, Maurice? Barbara and David are so fond of you that they overprotect you. There's been a wave of mother snatching. <laughs>
us, so we went back to painting. That was really his first love. Mm -hmm. He did love it. Went on and on about all the colors. He had that big book, remember, Mother? <gasps> oh, the big book! Do I remember? You remember very well. Like it was yesterday, he took such pride in his work. And you took out that pride also? Of course. So I can imagine how your late wife must have felt when you showed her one of your beautiful <clears throat> paintings. How did she know that Reese's wife died? I don't she know. must have first had a pride. Oh, she was very proud. And she was very supportive. Of course. She was a wife. That's what a wife is for. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a wife is for, Sophie. <laughs> Sophie, why am I trembling uncontrollably? <laughs> Lassie, he's holding my hand. What should I do? I don't know. <laughs> Things out all the time. <laughs> Always do this. You 
avoid any kind of confrontation. I just believe in going with the flow. What if there is no flow? There's always a little flow. <laughs> Mother. He sang, You're the top, 
You're Sophie Greengrass. Uh, Sophie was glowing like a butter jelly. I haven't seen her look like this since our wedding. What about my wedding? Oh, of course your wedding. <laughs> so where is she now? She's with Maurice Koenig, Martin Listen, will you? God, there must be something in the air here. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah always got aroused here. You two doing God knows what in the middle of <laughs> I had to face some facts. That's who had to face some facts. Martin doesn't want to tell you 
out of some modesty. Is that it, Martin? That he is also in love. This seems to be the week for people to fall in love. Except she behaves, of course, who won't even have her mother to console her. Martin, you've fallen in love. Another tap, please. Uh, sure. <laughs> Don't anybody say anything till I get back. <laughs> so, so sad. Well, you get to a stage. If you're a man, you get to a stage. If you're a woman, you get to that garden. You beat the junk pile. That's not fair. What? What's not fair? Rudy <laughs> was just talking about the double standard. What double standard? Oh, you know, middle-aged men going after young girls, just discarding their spouses. House is completely discarded. My lover's the same age as Trudy. You're kidding. Remember our veterinarian, Harvey Pluckett? No. This is a real thing, huh? Took care of Pom Pom? I never met him. His widow, Ruth. I get her taxes. For free? Well, that's hard, right? Put a charge something, you know that. That seems to be sort of a side issue. I mean, if Ruth Pluckett's a real thing. I'm in love with her, David. There's not much magic left with Trudy anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> you guys, counseling? We're already living apart. I have the house. Martin is sleeping in Harvey Plotnick's old spot. <laughs> We're about the same height. <laughs> sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the man in bed? That's Harvey. This will take the hospital after his first heart attack. <laughs> well, not the most romantic. That's good to Ruth, though. You know, she certainly is smiling brightly, considering the circumstances. <laughs> she had reason to smile. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. So, what did they do? Go 
out the back door? <laughs>